So we're going to be talking about meiosis. Meiosis is the opposite of mitosis in that mitosis maintains your cellular genetic material, while meiosis makes new copies. Or actually not necessarily new copies, but new types of cells that are different. So we'll be talking about, first off, why do we have mitosis? Why sex? Vision, you don't want to have asexual reproduction. So what is asexual reproduction? It's basically the same as mitosis. You're going to be producing cells with the same information as always. You just keep copying the same exact thing, or clones. This happens a lot with things like jellyfish, uh, things like uh, sea anemones. They're exact copies. Bacteria will do this. You keep everything the same. That's not what we want in meiosis. Meiosis, you want something new, something novel, something exciting that we're going to make in meiosis. So what are some examples of asexual reproduction before we get into meiosis? Uh, this can include things like budding. So if that were happening to humans, it'd be kind of like, oh, there'd be another Ms. Lee growing off me, and then boom, Ms. Lee is big enough, and then she kind of pops off. So it's a good thing humans don't do budding. But other things like yeast will do budding, like this right here, yeast budding. And things like hydra. So here are some examples of things that undergo asexual reproduction. Um, and some multicellular organisms, but not a whole lot. It tends to be something that's more common when you're single cell, just one cell. Where it's one cell, now we have to make a clone. So before we move on, what are some disadvantages of asexual reproduction? Take a look, what are some advantages? Wouldn't it be great if you could just make a copy of yourself anytime you wanted? Why would that be a good thing? Why would that be a bad thing? Take a moment and think about that. Everybody else usually does meiosis, so we're kind of considered a complex quote-unquote and we want to reproduce. So normally, we don't do mitosis for eggs and sperm. That would be a problem. So if you did do it though, think about it, we would have an egg. Normally, you have 46 chromosomes. 46 plus 46 from the dad. So add that up, you would end up with how many? 92. Ugh! That's a problem. You've got way too much DNA. That's not what we want. So this cannot happen. This cannot happen. Mitosis is not used for sex. It doesn't work. So what do we do instead? we do meiosis, right? If you wanted to look at your DNA, here's a female. We would look for 46 chromosomes, but they're paired up. There are 23 pairs of chromosomes, but she has 46. How do you know she's a female? She has two XX chromosomes. Versus a guy, same situation. We take a karyotype, which is all your DNA. It's a map of your DNA. We sort them up. We match them up. We find the ones that go together. And we count the same thing. You have 46 chromosomes, 23 pairs. We know this one's a guy because he's got an X and a Y. Guys are special, that's why they got a Y. So we know this is a male karyotype, a picture or a map of his DNA. It's important to recognize that we have homologous chromosomes, homo meaning same. Homologous means that they're paired, so they have the same information, one from your mom, one from your dad. And that's how we end up with this idea of pairs in the karyotype. So if we take a look, normally you're a diplo, you have two copies, two N, one from mom, one from dad. We can then separate those out and have double strands. We can copy those. So this is S phase, going back to mitosis. So sperm and eggs, we have 46, but we want 23, right? 23 pairs. So what do we do? We divide them so that the egg and sperm only have 23 instead of 46. That way, 23 plus 23, add that together, bam, voila, fertilization, 46. 46 is the perfect number, right? You maintain your number. 46 divided by 2, 2 times, boom, 46, you keep the maintain the number. You divide by 2 in order to keep meiosis going. So how do we make gametes? Remember, gametes are sex cells, so sperm and eggs. We alternate stages. It's called alteration of generations. You alternate in between being two copies and one. And the idea is basically kind of what I just said. You're diploid most of your life. Boom, you make gametes. The gametes meet. Bam, you have a zygote. We alternate between this haploid, diploid thing. Where diploid means two, haploid means one. So what happens in this life cycle? We have our cells, gametes, one copy. They combine, fertilization, magic of magics, and ta-da, we have gametes. It continues on and on. You mix things up. You want to mix things up in sex. Why do you want to mix things up? So you have different combinations. You are different than your parents. There is nobody who will ever be like you, even if you're a twin because of epigenetics, which we'll get into in a couple weeks. Stay tuned. Uh, but here I'm just repeating the same idea. Two end, one end, 
diploid to haploid continues on and on and on. They're very similar in stages. So remember we had prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, cytokinesis, but they're a little different and that's where I'll hit it today. So again, thinking back, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, cytokinesis, there are two divisions. So we differentiate that by saying there's prophase one and that's something called prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, telophase two. Take a note right here, we have red and blue that are separate and boom, red and blue together. That's going to be important for something called root combination, which makes variety in meiosis. We want to make things that are different. We are not like the clones. We are not uh, mitosis. We want to make people different in case, you know, new ideas, new thoughts. We want to make things that are different. So you kind of think of it twice, right? I, PMAT, PMAT. We want to repeat everything twice. So we have double divisions in meiosis. We have a meiosis 1 and a meiosis 2. You can sort of think of it like two mitosis, but not really. But you can kind of simplify it that way in your brain if you're trying to think. In both situations, we want to replicate our DNA, so the A, T, C, G deal. And then we're going to divide something called homologous pairs. So you want to separate kind of this boy and girl combination, and then we'll divide again. So repeat after me. Homologous pairs, P, mat, C. Then our second one is going to divide sister chromatin. So first division, homologous pairs. You try it. First division, homologous pairs. Second division, sister chromatids. You try it. Second division, sister chromatids. Keep those separate. Homologous pairs in the first division, sister chromatids in the second. There's some pictures. How you prepare for meiosis. So thinking back, we have all our growth phases. We copy our DNA. We have S phase. We prepare to divide. We duplicate the DNA. Same thing. So the same idea. We go through S phase, A's, T's, C's, and G's. We copy everything. We have meiosis 1, we're getting ready, we divide homologous pairs. Homo meaning same, the one from your mom and dad. This is called a tetrad. Synapsis is where they meet. So a synapse is a gap, it's where they meet, synapsis. They'll meet in the middle, metaphase. Telophase, they'll divide. We'll keep it one end and two double strands in each. We're reducing the numbers. We went from diploid to haploid. Repeat after me, diploid to haploid. Keep it again, diploid to haploid, reduction. In meiosis 2, we're not going to go through S phase again. We have enough DNA. We're going to divide sister chromatids, sister chromatids. And the sister chromatids are going to divide. And look, we have half the number of chromosomes we had in the beginning. What does this division look like? We have four cells now instead of two. In sperm, all four become. In eggs, it actually doesn't work that way. It goes one big fat egg and three that kind of die off and feed the original egg. So girls and guys differ in that way, but still the steps are the same PMAP. What happens in meiosis? Meiosis 1, interphase, prophase 1, metaphase 1, anaphase, telophase 1. Meiosis 2, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase 2. Very similar. The first division, again, homologous pairs. Second, sister chromatids. This is what makes them different. Homologous pairs with a tetrad, just your chromatids with a copy. What does this look like? You'll notice in the first type, prophase, why am I pointing the screen? You can't see. Uh, prophase, as you move across, we have bigger amounts of DNA in prophase 1, and we have four cells in the anaphase, prophase, uh, metaphase 2 step. So lots of DNA, two cells, lot, second phase, less DNA, four cells. Remember, we're trying to reduce the amount of DNA. Another key point of this is trading piece of DNA. We have something called recombination or crossover where you swap. So how does this work in humans? Like if I attach my arm to somebody else's arm, and we touched hands, we switched hands. We're swapping things out. This is why it's really important because not only are you a combination of your mom and dad, we are a brand new combination that has never existed before because of recombination. So we'll draw this out a little bit in class so you get an idea, but here's kind of that breakdown. Right? You start out with a red and a blue, eventually you'll get red with little bits of blue, a blue with little bits of red. Crossing over continues. Here's more images. How does it work? We cross over. We break the DNA. Ah! And then we glue it back on. So this is always a trend. Cross, break, glue. Cross, break, glue. Cross, break, glue. Over and over and over again. Every time recombination happens. And this happens for every chromosome that you have. And this makes a new combination that wasn't before. So first we had green and purple. There was never a green-purple combination before, but now we do. We have these green-blue combinations. 
um, that had never existed before, which is really important with the crossover. Why would it be important to have a crossover? So I'm telling you it's important, but why is it important? Try to think of something that might happen in the environment, a mutation, something that might happen that might be important to make somebody brand new. Alright, so now I've kind of gone through the steps of meiosis. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison. You can take a look at mitosis on one side, meiosis on the other. You see they have a lot in common, but we have things that are different. So now we're looking at mitosis. One division um, produces two cells, maintains the two ends. It's used for repair and growth. No crossover, none whatsoever. None whatsoever. Meiosis, we have two divisions. They're different. They're not identical. We want four cells. We go from 2N to 1N. We're going haploid and we're making gametes. We do have crossing over. This cross, break, glue. To summarize it all together, how does it happen? Mitosis, right? Mitosis, meiosis, 23, 23. We got our gametes. Put them together. Bam! Fertilization. Brand new baby. Brand new baby is going to do mitosis over and over until we get our marula, our blastula. We get you. Amazing, wonderful you. This is a great image. I really strongly recommend you put this one in your notes. If you've been sitting there, kind of just listen to me, tank, talk and dance. Uh, this one I, is very important because it shows you what happens to meiosis. You reduce the number. You make gametes. They go together. You go through mitosis. You grow and develop. Great summary slide. Ta-da! Fertilization, development, all that stuff. Yes. Great slide. Great slide to use. Why is it important to have sexual reproduction? We can make new random things, new random things. This is how it happens. Recombination, crossing over, random fertilization. You are the product of one and a million sperm. You're the product of one and a million eggs. That's pretty crazy that you're even alive today. So why is this all important? It creates variation. Um, our next unit is evolution, and we'll talk about why it's important that, you know, some people have brown hair and some people have blonde hair and some people have blue eyes and some people have green eyes and some people have brown eyes. There's different reasons why we have that, why we overproduce and have lots of kids. So more random, more images to follow up. We want things to look different. Variation comes from this genetic recombination, independent assortment. Uh, the following week, next week, we'll talk about genetics and we'll talk about Mendel and this crazy guy. We found out all these ways to be different and we really just, it's amazing to be different. It's great to be different. Uh, and that's part of our genetics. So again, you get cells from mom, cells from dad, put it together, and what do you got? You got you. So you're brand new, and you make gametes that are then different from your parents. So with every generation, you get new things that weren't there before. All tips, different types of things, we'll practice this more, but the idea is that any combination that could ever happen could happen. And, you know, your kids look different. These are a random couple, I don't know. Their kids look way different than them. Brand new combination. Lots of options. It allows you to be similar and different. You can look at the Baldwin brothers, some of you might know them on TV, right? Same parents, different brothers. The Jonas brothers, you guys might be a little too old for that, but the Jonas brothers, right? The Sheen brothers, right? They kind of have stuff the same. Here we've got our dad. At the kids, we got some stuff in common, some stuff different. Um, for, you know, I can't even think of any other fans, brothers and sisters at the moment. Um, and let's just summarize it all back up. It's always good to wrap it up. Meiosis, here's the steps. Here's the steps. Any questions, remember to make sure, shoot me a call, shoot me an email, ask me in class. I don't bite, but you gotta ask. I can't help you if you don't ask. So pulling it all that together, we have mitosis, meiosis, realize the differences, Meiosis makes genetic variation, crossover, all that good stuff. So uh, it's been good, it's been great. I will see you on the flip side. I'll see you next time, next week when we talk about genetics. So take care, have a good one. Take care. Done. Bye.